okay uh, hello all good evening so today uh, we have uh, uh, today we'll discuss week 11 so let you watch week 11 it's, uh, yes ma'am it's uh, pretty i mean it's so it's it's very much stats too like yeah. continuous random variables uh, pdfs and then cdfs just one lecture was i guess that was the transformation, transformation. that was new yeah. yeah apart from that everything was straightforward like basic stats to or something yeah yeah right so like week 11 has a lot of topics and but most of it almost everything you have seen in stats too So I will not go through each and every topic uh, today. Like if you have uh, gone through the lectures and if you think there is some point you're stuck or something is not clear, you can ask me. Ma'am, I just I just want to clarify one thing. I know this, but I still want to clarify this. Uh, mm -hmm. Professor actually didn't, uh, not, not proof actually, didn't uh, state all the properties, let's say for expectation. Mm -hmm. He only said like two properties are very important, so keep those in mind. But ma'am, mm -hmm. we have like uh, all the linearity properties as well, like expectation of a into x is a into expectation of x, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So those mm -hmm. properties we also need for the calculation, right? I mean, let's say we have three uh, x plus two y, and then we mm -hmm. gotta calculate for that particular, let's say z equals three x plus two y, then we gotta calculate for expectation of z while we have the expectation of x and y separately, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Like So but, all the properties we need to remember, right? I mean, even if professor didn't mention, I just want to know that. Uh, I think sir has mentioned linearity property and uh, like... Ma'am, uh, he has done it for... Uh, Variance. I mean, he has done all the properties for variance, but he categorically said mm -hmm. that uh, only two expectation properties are very important. That's why I'm asking you. Okay, so maybe one, uh, yeah, like if, if you know that expectation follows the linearity property, so expected value of x plus mm -hmm. y should always be equal to expected mm -hmm. value of x plus expected value of x y, or, mm -hmm. or expected value of a times x will always be equal to a times expected value of x. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and if x and y are independent, only in that case we can say that expected value of x times y is equal to expected value of x times expected value of y. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, the, so this independent property we had in mm -hmm. stats too, but he didn't yeah. actually say it. I mean, he... Mm -hmm. he he actually didn't say it. I, I mm -hmm. wouldn't say he didn't say it. He never said you should mug it up or he didn't say you do not need it. So that's why I'm asking, like, is it 50-50 that like we are on our own, like we have to go through all the properties or it's fine if we do not uh, go through it's, it? It's fine if you don't go through it. I mean, um, like you have already studied in stats too, right? So it is under mm -hmm. the assumption that you have already done all this thing before. So just building up on that so many things okay, explicitly has not been mentioned but if you have started in stats too you should remember hmm. okay okay yeah. anybody else also uh, this monday uh, Professor Harish is going to take the session for uh, week 1, 2, and 11, 12. So you can attend those sessions. Week 1, 2? 11 and 12. Week 1, 2, 11, 12. Okay. Yeah. So Monday evening, 6 to 8, Professor okay. Harish will take the session. Okay, ma'am. <clears throat> ma actually speaking, I have not gone through the lectures of week 11, but. Uh, Okay. Seen the uh, topics is more like stats too. So yeah. No. Uh, uh, even I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Uh, so I yeah. Week eleven is all of like stats too, except one topic. <laughs> Others also you have not gone through.
Uh, sorry, ma'am. What did you say? No, no. I'm just asking if uh, nobody else has gone through the lectures. Oh, okay. okay. I have two more to go. Like I gone through four lectures. Okay. So the last two is I think uh, maybe some continuous distributions and transformation of random variables. The total of thirteen lectures, right? Thirteen, fourteen, something. Seven lectures and some tutorials, I guess. I mean, seventh one, a uh, sixth one was the transformation. S seventh one was expectation and all that. Then yes, we have seven like seven lectures and one tutorial. Okay, okay. Uh -huh, so maybe yeah. the initial uh, few chapter and the initial few videos have been put into supplement or something, I guess. Okay. Yeah. They have starts from six. Professor. Starts from six thirty. The first one is marked as six, chapter six. So I guess the first yeah. five is moved. Uh, yeah, and uh, Professor Harish actually starts like uh, as you guys have seen discrete random variables on all that. So the discrete part oh, okay, is okay. completely discrete removed. The discrete part is maybe is isn't supplementary. Yeah. Um, what do you want to do in the session? So in the week, week 12, mm -hmm. there is estimation, right? Or is there like uh, additional yeah. content that starts to? Uh, week, uh, yeah, week 12, you have uh, bivariate normal distribution. You have uh, ML estimation. You have EM algorithm, some brief introduction. Then you have uh, jointly discrete continuous random variable. Then you have all the inequalities uh, like Markov, Chevy shapes. Then you have weak law of large numbers, central limit theorem, and I guess Hofting inequality. Yes. This is there in week 12. Ma'am, where are the addition? You said something about additional content, uh, additional lectures. No, that is not available now anywhere. It's not in the portal. Okay. No, in supplementary contents also, it's not available. Okay, maybe they be, maybe this time they have not put. Yeah. But if you go through the slides, right, uh, I mean, you will see all the lectures. Which slides? Le lecture transcripts? Lect lecture slides, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So what do you want to do today? So I give some problems maybe? Problems is fine. If you can just uh, summarize it within like 10, 15 minutes, uh, it's totally up to you. I mean, how much time you would take. But if you can summarize the particular lecture six, which is the transformation, okay. just, just just for the record. Okay, okay, sure.
Ma'am, actually, lecture transcripts are not available for week eleven and twelve. Uh, so, lecture transcripts are yeah. no. I was telling about uh, lecture the slides. slides. Uh, about transcripts, you are saying are not available for eleven twelve. Yeah, transcripts uh, you can upload it now, ma'am, for eleven and twelve. Yeah. Okay. Because now that the lectures are out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it should uh, get uploaded. Yeah, we'll get it done. So uh, in transformation of random variable, so so what we want is let's say uh, you have two random variables given to you. Uh, let's say you have w and you have x, and you know that. Uh, join distribution. Let's say you know the join PDF. So let's say it is F W X. Okay. And now what you want is let's say we define some function of uh, W and X. So define let's say Y, which is a function of uh, W and X, and let's define another random variable set, which is another function of uh, W and X. Okay, let's maybe let's write it as H one H H one H two or G one G two. Okay, and uh, here G one and G two are invertible. Saying they are invertible. Now the question is like, what is going to be uh, f of or g of y comma z? So how do you find the distribution of the joint distribution of y and z? Given you know the distribution of uh, uh, w and x, and you know this is how your uh, y and z is defined. Okay, so. To I uh, to find out like what is your distribution for the joint distribution for y and z, uh, what you what we do is so for this you have like you just multiply it by Jacobian. So uh, so g of y z will be the Jacobian times f of Wx. This is y comma z, right? And what does what does this Jacobian give? This Jacobian is nothing but so uh, you had y comma x as the original random variable, and uh, you defined some function of uh, w and x which is g1 and g2 right so this jacobian is nothing but this determinant of this matrix so this would be prad g1 by do sorry do g1 by 
डो वाई डो जी वन बाई डोज एट एंड दिस इज डो जी टू बाई डो वाई एंड डो जी टू बाई डोज एट this is a jacobian matrix so you find the determinant of this and this is what uh this is this basically gives how much should you scale uh the area so so that uh, i mean you can find the distribution you can find this uh, g of y comma z this is all that it gives so basically initially you would in y comma y comma y z Plane, right? So you had g of y z, y comma z, d y d z. So this has been transformed to f of w comma x, and w is okay. So W is what? So W would be some invertible. Ah, uh, like you will write your W in terms of ah, uh, like these are these are the way the function is defined, right? So what you do is you you write your W in terms of ah uh, the function of y and z. So maybe that will be some function. Let's say Q. Key of y comma z, and again your x would be some function of y comma z. Let's say it is r. This times determinant of the Jacobian times uh, dy. dy dz so this is the setup that we have for uh, like finding the distribution for y and z here what is this q this q is nothing but the inverse of g This Q inverse is nothing but not G G one, and this R is nothing but R inverse is uh, G two. Okay, so let let's just look at one problem. Maybe then it should be uh, more clear. Um, let's say the question is: uh, Your W is uniform in zero comma one, and X is also uniform in zero comma one. and it is given to you that w and x are independent okay and we have defined two other random variable let's say y and z so y is some function of w and x so let's let's take y to be y uh y to be uh w minus x and z to be w plus x now you have to find what is the distribution of 
Why is it? So before we go there, like uh, how will you find the distribution of W X? How do you find f of W X? What is going to be f of W X? Then they're independent, right? So they are independent, yeah. So the multiplication of three D F would be the case, I guess. Yeah. As they're independent, one. yeah. So as they're independent, uh, it is just going to be f of w x to be f of w times f of x, and f of w is just and so this is just one, just be one, or w lying between w x lying between zero and one, zero otherwise. Now, uh, okay. So this is how this W and Z is defined. Now, what will be? Uh, now you need to find out G of W Y comma Z. So what will we do first? Uh, we'll first uh, we need to write uh, this W and X uh, in terms of Y and Z, right? So it is given to us that uh, W minus X equal Y and W plus X equal Z, right? So this will give you what this if if I add these two I get W equal Y plus Z by two and similarly what is X that is just Z minus W which is Y plus Z by two right so this is what this is Z minus Y by two right so we got X to be Z minus Y by two, and W to be Z plus Y by two. Okay. Now we need to find the Jacobian matrix. So this is you need to you need to uh, find the uh, partial derivative of uh, G1 and G2 with respect to your uh, Y and Z, right? So in this case, what was G1? G1 was this Y minus X. This is G1. And this is G2. Right? What W plus X. So you differentiate So, how much should you change your G one with respect to Y? Similarly, do G one by do uh, do G one by do Z, right? Then you have do G two by do Y, do G two by do Z. So G is Y minus X, uh, sorry, W minus X. So ma'am, are we taking the, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the functional way, I mean, as we took before, let's say X plus Y equals 10. So we took uh, the function as X plus Y minus 10. Are we taking such a way? Or we are taking just y on the oh, right hand wait. side. Okay, can you repeat? We are taking. Uh, ma'am, we are actually taking partial derivatives uh, on g1 and g2, those two functions, right? So we have g1 as uh, 
w minus x equals y. So are we taking w minus x minus y as g1? Then we are taking no, no, partial no, 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 no. Um, I just wrote okay. Yeah, instead of x and uh, w, we can write uh, uh, z and y, no, madam. Indeed. Okay, actually, uh, I, okay. Actually, I made a mistake over here. This is your. Uh, I mean, how will you differentiate this G one with respect to Y and Z? Because G one is uh, we have written as Y minus X, so that is not possible, right? So actually, this G one uh, this was supposed to be Q. This is not. This is do Q. This is do Q. This is also do Q, and this is also do. Sorry, do R. Yeah. So now, uh, okay. So now we have uh, G one to be in this case Z minus Y by two, and let's take G two to be Z plus Y by two. Okay. So, uh, what is do G one by do Y? It is just minus one by two. Do g one by do z. It is one by two. Do g two by do y. Yeah, but uh, here uh, g z g one which you have written is equal to x also, no? Actually, so instead of x, you are writing as g one. Ah, instead of x, we are writing as g one. Yeah. Ah, uh, we are relating it to the. Uh, Problem statement actually. Okay, uh, let me go back. So uh, this was given to you. This was the question, right? W and X is given. Uh, this this was also given. This was also given. Okay. Now uh, what we had to find was uh, find uh, uh, find the distribution or the joint distribution of Y and Z. Okay. Uh, so to find the joint distribution of y and z, we need to know uh, this term, which is Jacobian. What is the de determinant of this Jacobian matrix, right? So we need to find out this, and this is given by this was given by uh, like whatever transformation you use here. So what we did is um, this w minus y equal w minus x, right? Z equal w plus x. So we wrote w as a function of y and z, and we wrote x as a function of um, y and z. Okay, this is what we did, and now. Uh, now, when we have to find the Jacobian, so this Jacobian is like how much change, uh, like how much should how much G one you should change with respect to y. Uh, you need to find with respect to y how much change it is. Then similarly with respect to z. Then same for G two. Do G two by do y and do G two by do z, right? This is what we did. So, um, to do like to write W and X in terms of y and z, we solve for it, and we got X to be z minus y by two, uh, and W to be z plus y by two. Okay, so we took G one to be We took G one to be uh, Z minus Y by two and G two to be Z plus Y by two. Okay. So for that, now we find the Jacobian matrix and if we take the determinant. You get minus one by four, minus one by four, right? So this is minus one by two. So you need to take the mod of that. So if you take the mod of Determinant of J. This is 
1 by 2. Okay. So what is g of y comma z? This is nothing but mod of determinant of j times f y not f y we had w x right f w x of w comma x okay and determinant this this we got as one by two and f of w x and w now you can write in terms of y and z because we had found this so z plus y by two so this is z plus y by 2 and x is z minus y by 2, right? And you know the distribution for uh, f of w x. This is nothing but uh, 1, right? Yes. So, um, okay. So this is just going to be 1 by 2. Now we need to figure out uh, the range. So this would be 1 by 2, 0 otherwise. So 1 by 2 when? So initially you had uh, xy here. Then we did the transformation, and the transformation was uh, z plus y by 2, z minus y by 2. This is xy. This is xy. Now you need to convert to yz so how will you draw y plus z by wx z? No, madam, that is first first diagram uh, is wx okay okay right right it, it was wx right because this is w this is x yeah this is yz right so y plus z by 2 and you had z minus y by 2 Okay. How will this look like? Uh, so y by two. Things that plus y would be here. By two. You need to draw this figure. Okay, instead of this, we can we can actually calculate few points, uh, then you can draw, isn't it? Uh, no, no. Like x so, equal to 1, y equal to 0, x equal to 0, y equal to 1. Then what will be the values of z and x? No, like uh, four okay. points. If w you have four points, then yeah, yeah, that is fine. Um uh, this was w and x was independent, right? So, uh, this is nothing but f of w x of z plus y by 2 times f of w x z minus y by 2. Okay, now, um, w and x lies between 0 to 1. 
W X lies between zero to one. So this Z plus Y by two and this Z minus Y by two will also lies between zero to one. This is Z plus Y less than zero, and this is zero Z minus Y two. Okay, let's draw this. Z plus. This is z plus y by two. This is z plus y equals zero. This is z equal y. And this is z minus y equal two. Right. So you will get. The reason inside this. Right? And how is x varying uh, not x? How is y varying here? This is um uh, this is z minus y uh equal zero. This is um, z plus y equal to this is z plus y equal zero. So this whole thing is nothing but uh, one by two. This is dy dz. And how is y varying? Y is varying between zero and two. Not zero and two. Y is varying from this point. I mean, a point on this line to point on this line. So y is varying from minus z minus z to this this line, right? Z is z. And how is uh, oh, sorry? This was Z. This was not Y. This was Z. Wait. Right? Okay. Zero to two, no, to, madam. To, no, no. To see how Y is varying, you need to draw the horizontal line. No. So this is a Y equals Z. It's varying from Z to this point, a uh, point on this line. So that is uh, two minus Z. Right. And how will z vary? Z will vary from minus two this point is how much what? This point is one, right? I think this is one. Yeah, this is one. And can Z take negative value? Z is W plus X, and both X and W are positive, right? So it will only vary from zero to one. So you have zero to one. If we solve it, what do we get? We have one by two, zero to one. This is y, which is two minus z minus z, which is two minus two z dz. So this is one by two. Two 
टू जेड माइनस जेड स्क्वायर जीरो टू वन दिस इज टू माइनस वन विच इज वन बाई टू गेट वन बाई टू is this process clear now what is 1 by 2 in the graph given in the figure area uh, total uh, should be 1 no like uh, where one where is 1 by 2 in the figure so i am asking madam answer you are given as uh, of Huh? One by two is the final answer, no matter distribution. Yeah, yeah. One by two was the final answer. We just needed to find the range for. I mean, how is y and z going to vary? So this is how we are going to vary it. So this is uh, y lies between two Zero minus z, z, z line. Zero to one. This is otherwise. Ma'am, can you please explain the diagram? Actually, so this diagram is only half of it. Madam, like Z cannot take negative value. No, no. So this is the only reason. This. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Can you please yeah. explain diagram? Ah, oh, okay. Um. so um uh, what we got is uh, at the end we got this right at the end we got this half of f of w x uh, w was z plus y by 2 uh, x was z minus y by 2 okay and um we know that like this w and x lie between 0 and 1 w and x lies between 0 and 1 so this is your w this is your x so they should also lies between 0 to 1 So, w which is z plus y by two is less than equal to one, less than equal to zero, and this is z minus y by two. This should also be less than equal to one, and this should be less than equal to zero. Fine. So this is one. Now from here, what do you get? You get z plus y less than equal to less than equal zero. From here, you get z minus y is less than equal to is less than equal to zero, right? So you can draw the figure for z plus y greater than equal to zero, z plus y less than equal to two. So if this is let's say this is my z, this is my y. Ah, uh, so z plus y greater than equal to zero. This is z equal minus y, right? So this will go like this will pass through origin. This is my z plus y. Uh, this is yeah. 
this is z plus y equal to zero okay now i want something which is z plus y greater than equal to zero and z plus y less than equal to two so i can draw the figure for z plus y less equal to two so z plus y equal to two would be something like this right this is z plus y equal to two now you have z minus y greater than equal to zero and z minus y less than equal to two so z minus y greater than equal to zero is nothing but this line right this is z minus y greater than equal to zero and i'm not greater than this is z minus y equal to zero and you have now z minus y equal to two so z minus y equal to two would be here this was right this is my z minus y equal to 2 fine right? now um okay so uh, it is given that z plus y greater than equal to 0 and less than equal to 2 greater than equal to 0 and less than equal to 2 in this area and z minus y i mean whatever is enclosed here this is what you want okay and how is uh, z varying so z is varying from so to find the range for z you can draw a line horizontal line to z to the z axis so whatever point it cuts the graph that will give you the limit so so the limit for z so dz is this is z equal y to this uh, this set which is 2 minus y 2 plus y uh, 2 plus y oh no 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 ha, ha. no 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 2 minus y yes 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 2 minus y right and once we have fixed the limit for uh, z the limit for y would be uh, like this this point is 1 this is 1 and y cannot be negative uh, why is that because um, yeah. Okay, y can be negative uh, in this case. Okay, so y can be as y can be negative. So we can write this limit as minus one to one. I think I draw I drew it opposite. It was supposed to be y this side. But okay, it's okay. So this is how the limit should be. How how y is varying? Y is varying from so this is uh you need to find this point of intersection, right? And what is this line? This line is z minus y equals zero. So the point of interest you need to find the point of intersection for this line and this line. That will give you this point. So this line is z minus y equals zero. And this line is z plus y equal to 2. OK, that is not 1. Oh, no, that is 1 only. So 2z equal 2. So z equal 1. z equal 1. So if z equal 1, y should also be 1. So this point is 1, 1 comma 1. So, so the upper limit for y is one okay ma'am yeah and similarly yes. you can find this limit in the lower is an intersection yeah, yeah so you need to find the intersection of this line and this line yes. okay
you know, for the sake of completion, mm -hmm. can we do this differentiation? I mean, uh, integration also, because limits are um, varying. Uh, okay. Um. So D Z. Uh. You will have two minus y minus y, which is minus two y. Um. Okay. And this is T y minus one to one, and this would give you two y. Minus two y square by two, so this is minus one to one. So this is what this is two minus one, which is one minus minus two minus one. Is it minus two yeah. minus one? Just minus three. Uh, this is getting us yeah. four. Sir, uh, two y uh, minus of minus. First, uh, for then this two y, if you substitute one and minus one, two uh, minus plus two minus two, no, two minus three, it will become zero, no. Oh, uh, how? I I am giving limit separately. Two y from uh, no, minus one to one. Come we get same. half. Uh, why is the answer not coming? See, okay, wait. One to one, two minus y minus y, two minus two y dy, two y minus y square, just two minus one minus of minus two minus one. It's coming as four. Something is going wrong. Because integral dx dy is always equal to integral dy dx. I mean, previous one you consider the one to zero, the value you know consider the minus. Here is minus one to one to minus one. I think that's the difference. Ah uh, no, because of I uh, I considered because of this, because my y uh, y is defined as w minus x and z is defined as w plus x. So y can take uh, the negative value, right? Okay, I'll check what is going wrong here. Uh, should I give some problem which you can try? Um, uh, can you solve activity questions? Activity questions? Okay. Now, uh, which activity? Eleven point six. Eleven point six. Okay. You you want the second question, right? Eleven point six. Second question. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
so here you just have to find the jacobian matrix um so you have x of u comma v is given as 3 u square minus b square you are given y of u comma v to be 2 uv then you need to find what is jacobian of u comma v where this is defined as do x by do u do x by do v do y by do u and do y by do v okay this is you know you just have to differentiate so what is do x by do u this is going to be rad 6u I mean, yeah this 6u right yeah 6u uh this is minus 2v this is 2v and this is 2u so find the determinant what will it give you 12u square plus 4v square 12u square plus 4v square this should be the answer i guess yeah this is the answer madam one out of the uh, thing so quiz 2 you have discussed madam i was late to join this session quiz 2 we have not discussed but quiz 2 uh, we tuesday uh, the ta session that happened no there uh, quiz 2 will be discussed yeah. any changes madam any questions being uh, removed any no, no, so, being given no 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 so just one problem the answer for one problem was given wrong so was uh, only that will be modified the singular value problem right ma'am singular value yeah the the answer you have by but, I, but some of us has got between uh, 2.2 uh, and 2.6 to uh, matter whatever the answer was there can we solve that problem madam if possible okay so there you just have to okay one matrix was given to you you do the a transpose a or a transpose find the eigen value once you find the eigen value just take the square root and from there you can get the answer we can just write the steps so directly we are not able we should not do but because it was a square matrix Why? Mm -hmm. Because also we have to take uh, a into a transpose. Ah, oh, because this is how you find the singular values. I mean, uh, singular values are what? Singular values are uh, square root of square root yeah. of eigen values of a transpose a or yeah. a transpose. Yeah, square root of. I think if it's a real symmetric matrix, then it will be equal to its eigen values. So here it's not symmetric. A transpose or A transpose. So whatever matrix was given to you, ah, uh, you find you find either A transpose A or you find either A transpose, and then find its eigen value. Yeah. So square root 
of eigen so you whatever matrix was given you find a transpose a or a transpose find its eigen values and take their square roots so what was given the question like condition number is the uh, like the highest eigen value divided by the lowest eigen value thing right so you just have to sigma 1 by sigma n actually the condition number sigma 1 by sigma n yeah and what ah. was sigma 1 given us i mean it is the highest or the lowest uh, highest. sigma 1 was highest sigma highest, n was the yeah. lowest yeah so answer it will be changed answer will be changed yeah okay but man just a question condition number is min by max or max by min actually the condition number it's max by min maximum stretch by minimum stretch it's max by min right max by yeah, min stretching yeah. by string ah okay okay ma'am uh, do you have any other problem for jacobian yeah i have uh, i have i can give it so just give me one minute i will okay um. let's say uh, you have uh, the joint distribution of w and x f of w x is given to you which is 4 times w x for w lying between 0 to 1 and x lying between 0 to 1 uh zero otherwise uh you define y to be w square and z to be wx now find the distribution g of y z can you try this
So this is Jacobian matrix you got. What is a Jacobian matrix? Anyone found it? What is uh, G1 and G2 that you will take here? G1 mem uh, under root y and G2 z by w. Z by w, yeah. And w is root y. Yeah. Hmm. And what is Jacobian matrix? No, we are working. We are working good. Okay, sure.
ठीक है सो हेयर जो y इक्वल डब्ल्यू स्क्वायर राइट सो w कैन बी रूट y इट कैन नॉट बी नेगेटिव बिकॉज w इज ओनली बिटवीन जीरो एंड वन सो वी कैन राइट w टू बी रूट y एंड z इज w कॉमा x right so from here we can find x to be z by w which is z by root y so we wrote w and x in terms of y and z so w is so w which was root y is let's say some g1 of y comma z and uh, z and from there we found x to be it's capital x so x to be z by root y which is some another function of y and z okay so now we need to find the jacobian so jacobian is do g1 by do y do g1 by do z do g2 by do y and do g2 by do z okay so do g1 by do y is what this just 1 by 2 root by do g1 by do z is nothing but zero do g2 by do y is Oh, uh, by two by eight. So y to the power minus one by two. So y to the power minus three by two. Okay. This is. I said y to the power minus three by two. Zero, and do uh dos g two by do z is just one by root y. Now if we take the determinant of this. This is one by two y, yeah, minus zero. So one by two y, right? So this is the determinant of Jacobian. Now you need to find g of y z. So this will be mod of determinant of Jacobian times f w x. Of w comma x, determinant of z is uh, um, determinant of Jacobian matrix is one by two y. So this is just one by two y, and f of w x, w comma x. So w is root y, so root y, and x is z by root y, right? So how is f w x is defined? f of w x is defined as four times w x. So this would be one by two by two y four times w x. So this is my w, so root y and x is z by root y. So we get four z. So this also gets cancelled out and two z by y. Two z by y. Again, we need to find out the range for uh, this w and x, right? So w lies between zero and one. So root y will also be between zero and one, and x lies between zero to one. So your z by root y will also lies between zero and one. Oh, this is y. This is z. Okay, so this is two z by 
y this is 0 otherwise we need to find the limits for y and z Zero less than root y less than one means uh, y lies in between zero and one, right? Oh, uh, y lies between zero and one. Because uh, in this equality, if you we can uh, mm -hmm. square it, square everything. Maybe yeah, if we can square everything. Do that way. Uh, Um, and zero less than z less than zero less than z by root y less than one means uh, it can be zero less than z less than root y. This is yeah zero less than z less than root y. So z square would be less than y less than zero, and y should be. So y equals z square, how will it look? Y equals z square. Uh, it will be downward parabola now. No, it will be this, right? What parabola? No, not this, like this. Yeah. It's how it will look like. This is how it will look like. And z is between 0 to y. So this part will not be there. So you have um, z square equal y. So z varies from 0 to uh, 0 to root y. right? This is how it look like. And y is varying from 0 to 1. So y is varying from 0 to 1. So y1, so this will be something like this. So 0 to 1. So this is what the figure will look like, I guess, yeah. So you can just put uh, y varying from, or y varying from 0 to 1 and z varying from 0 to y to yeah this you can put here so y varying from 0 to 1 and z varying from 0 to root y Actually, okay, now y is varying from, what did we write? y is varying from 0 to 1. And x varying from 0 to root y. Okay. Mm. No, your y is varying from... Oh, it is fine. Yeah, this, this will work. Z varying from 0 to root y, y varying from 0 to 1. Other way you can also write is y varying from uh, uh, z square to 1 and z varying from 0 to 1. This will also work. Yeah. So ma'am, it depends which strip we are taking. If we are taking horizontal, yeah. then the limit would change. Yeah. If yeah. we are taking vertical, then the limit would change. 
yeah i mean both are the same thing it's just a different way of writing basically we are the reason we got is this so depends on how you want to take the limit Yeah, we can try this question. I mean, uh, upper uh, in the. Previous question: Why we were uh, doing integration? Oh, uh, where? Uh, that uh, that one. Uh, the previous previous one. previous one. No, actually, we did not have to do integration. We just checked it uh, simply. We just wanted the limits. We just wanted no. the limits you want to put because initially uh it was wx right and now you have to write the range for y and z and ma'am if we do the integration the answer should be one right because it's yeah. a pdf yeah answer should be one but last time we didn't get one no last time some four or something this previous question yeah that's what i was thinking somewhere i was somewhere uh, somewhere i was one. doing wrong i guess so i i will check that okay and for this also we should uh, just to verify we can just double integrate the limits and check right for this yeah, you can you can do that yeah yeah you can verify this to z y you just do uh Two z by y, dy dz, and z is varying from zero to root y, and y is varying from zero to one. Check this, and yeah, just check if this is one. I think it should come one. Then y is varying from zero to one, and yeah, why is zero to one? We should write like firstly we should write y limit and then z limit. Ah, oh, it's okay. I can. Okay. Anyway, I can do raise a dy. It's okay. Yeah, it's coming to be one by yeah one. Either either ways we can do now, ma'am. The the limits if you put it as uh, zero and one as the inner limit, then you integrate it with y and then with z. Mm. Yeah. Okay, you can try this question. So here both x one and x two are exponential lambda. 
and they are independent also. So here um, x2 is already y2. So x1 is just going to be y1 minus x2, which is y1 minus y2. Right? So we got x1, which is y1 minus y2. This is some function of y1, y2. Let's say g1 of y1, y2. And x2 to be y2, which is some function g2 of y1, comma y2 okay now if we find the jacobian matrix this is do g1 by do x1 sorry do g1 by do y1 uh, do y1 and it is what uh, do g1 by do y1 one do g1 by do y2 do g1 by do g2 by do y1 yeah g2 by do y2 So what did you get as Jacobian matrix? Determinant. 1 minus 1, 0, 1. Determinant 1. 1 minus 1, 0, 1. one. Determinant is 1. Okay. So my G of Y1, Y2 of Y1, comma Y2 is nothing but mod of 1, which is 1 itself. So this is just F of X1, X2 of X1, comma X2. And what is x1 and x2? x1 we got as y1 minus y2, y1 minus y2, and x2 we got as y2. So x1 and x2 are given as independent, and both x1 and x2 are uh, exponentially distributed. So x lambda. So what is the distribution? And they are independent, so f of x1, x2 should be equal to f of x1, x1 times f of x2, x2, right? So what is f of x of x1? This is just e to the power minus lambda. Minus lambda x1. Yeah, e to the power minus lambda x1, lambda e to the power minus lambda x2, right? This is just lambda square e to the power minus lambda x1 plus x2. So this is going to be lambda square e to the power minus lambda x1 plus x2. So this was my x1. This was my x2. So if you, this is just y1, right? So we got lambda square e to the power minus lambda y1. All of you got this answer? Yes, ma'am. I got it. Actually, okay. got, I put the wrong pdf i forgot the pdf so i removed okay. the lambda ah in the cdf you have one minus e to the power minus lambda x ah lambda x now huh? so yeah. i had that in mind so i removed the lambda so i didn't get the lambda square hmm. okay yeah so most of the questions i mean if, if it comes for transformation this is how you can solve it Are we getting formula sheets for the finals, like for the PDFs? Yeah, for uh, this, uh, I mean, final exam, you will get the formula sheet. So same as what you used to get for stats too, uh, except hypothesis testing, you will get everything.
So here the range would be what? x1, x2 was greater than or equal to 0. So both y1 and y2 would also be greater than or equal to 0. You can just write that. So g of uh, y1, y2 is lambda square e to the power minus lambda y1 or y1, y2 greater than or equal to 0. 0 otherwise. Okay, so this was all you had in the transformation of random variables. Anything else specific you want to discuss from week 11? Please upload the dance transcript. Uh, uh, like transcript yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll upload it. Awesome. Just one question. Whenever we are, uh, I mean, we are going to check in the exam mm -hmm. uh, for the transformation. So mm -hmm. we would be specifically given IID, right? And even if it's not IID, then it would be independent. Yeah, I mean, or if it comes in an exam or, or something, I mean, mm -hmm. it it would be simpler. I mean, not something very complicated. The distribution will be given to you. Either the distribution will be given to you, or uh, if not given to you, maybe they're independent or uh, their IIDs, something like that. So, so either way, ma'am, it's the similar thing. I mean, that's why I'm asking mm -hmm. if if we get a check for the property distribution of uh, not not distribution. Uh, the the marginal of x into marginal of y that is equals mm -hmm. to the joint. Then it would mm -hmm. take some extra time in the exam. So that's why I'm asking. Uh, yeah, but I mean you will not get anything complicated to solve in the exam. So things would be simpler. They the, the last one that we solved, right? I think this had. The IID one. Yeah, I think this had come in the previous uh, term. So you see, there, there is not much calculation. And also, the formula sheet will be provided. So you can easily look at what the PDFs are, what the CDFs are. So, ma'am, only this thing we can expect in the end term from this week only the transformation, nothing else. Uh, no, why not? In week 11, you have seen from uh, all the continuous random variable, right? You have seen mm -hmm. a unit form, you have seen expectation, you have seen exponential distribution, you have seen conditional expectations. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Then joint, so, so that's the question, actually. Area. So we can expect all kind of questions like in all stats kind of we used to get alongside this. Yeah. Alongside this, because from uh, week, whatever is there in these seven uh, lectures, you can expect questions from there. It's not like this is the only new topics you'll get from here. It's not like that. Ah, uh, OK, OK, OK. Yeah. OK, uh, anything else? So we saw the quiz two results. It does. It is good. Quiz two results are much better than quiz one results. So maybe you will get uh, the scores in few days. I guess. We're gonna make the end term tougher. No, no, it's not like that. <laughs> Uh, any other questions and topic? Uh, Amrita, all the other topics uh, that are there in week 11, no? uh, you have already seen in stats too. So there is no new topic. This was the only new topic that was taught extra.
Uh, anything else? If not, we can close the session for today. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.